literally the best sweetener in the world, at least in my opinion. Not only is it one that tastes pretty much just like sugar, there was even a study that took a look at the sensorial aspects of it and found that when baking with this kind of sweetener, it barely tasted different from sugar. And I think what makes this particular sweetener so unique is that it comes from a rare kind of sugar to begin with. It comes from a sugar that's in figs and in raisins. It's just relatively rare if you really wanna call it that. I'm talking about allulose, but let's get into the benefits of it and how you can use it. Because I think this sweetener is going to take the world by storm. We've all seen the research that came out on erythritol and no matter how you feel about it, I did videos talking about the science and it's really nothing to be concerned with, but it still rocked the world and it got people looking for different sweeteners. People don't wanna to turn to sucralose. People don't wanna to turn to aspartame. We're seeing stuff classifying aspartame as a potential class two carcinogen, which again, we don't have to be freaked out by that, but we do need to open our eyes to other options. So allulose is so structurally similar to fructose that it can literally block the transport of fructose. That's how molecularly similar it is to fructose, which is the sugar that's in fruit or like high fructose corn syrup. So it can block you from absorbing that, but it also can block glucose from absorbing which can mean that if you ingest it with carbohydrates, it can lower the impact of those carbohydrates. So not only do you have a sweetener that works, that barely has any calories, but it also can modulate glucose. Now, there's another piece of it that people don't ever realize, and that is the fact that allulose also inhibits sucrase and maltase, which are enzymes that break down sugar. So if you inhibit those, then you're breaking down less sugar, which means you're digesting and absorbing less sugar. So in a double whammy fashion, it's having a huge impact when it comes down to blood sugar. And now from a caloric perspective, what's cool about this is it's not technically zero calorie. There's still 0.4 calories per gram, which means one tenth the calories of a normal carbohydrate. But I will take that all day, every day, considering it tastes pretty much just like sugar. But one of the best things is that it does not ferment in the gut. So like a lot of sugar alcohols, you know how it feels. So it's not very fun. So since it doesn't ferment, you don't get that bloating and that discomfort. As a matter of fact, there was a study published in the journal Metabolism that demonstrated that 70% of allulose is excreted in the urine. So you're only left with 30% that's actually getting absorbed anyway. And even when it does get absorbed, it's not something that we're overly concerned with. In fact, the safety trials on it are pretty darn good as well. Let's jump over to how it impacts glucose, because this is probably one of the biggest things. Whether you're low carb, whether you're paleo, whether you're someone that's just trying to control blood sugar a little bit more, or you're just a regular health conscious person, this is important. So the first study was published in Glycemia Consulting. Okay, it had subjects just consume 25 grams of allulose straight up. They found no impact on blood sugar whatsoever. And then they also saw no impact on insulin. That's crazy. So 25 grams of this stuff had zero impact on blood sugar or insulin. Then there was a cool study published in Nutritional Sciences and Vitaminology. This was wild because it combined allulose with maltodextrin. Now maltodextrin is higher glycemic than sugar. So 75 grams of maltodextrin combined with either two and a half grams, five grams, or seven and a half grams of allulose. They found that allulose lowered the blood sugar response after the maltodextrin significantly and it lowered the insulin response. But it didn't just do this right afterwards. It did this 30, 60, and 90 minutes afterwards. So it had a long tail effect. This is groundbreaking, not just as a sweetener that we can obviously use in really cool situations, but as something that people could use as even a tool, like combining your carbohydrates with this stuff. But then probably my favorite study with this was published in Bioscience, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry. This took a look at subjects eating a sandwich, okay? A sandwich that was 87% carbohydrates. Most sandwiches are high carb. And they had them, along with the sandwich, consume a tea that had five grams of allulose. Diabetic subjects that were in the group saw a huge reduction in their blood glucose compared to if they didn't have the allulose. So their glucose just didn't even spike that much. And then healthy subjects barely saw an increase in their insulin levels. This is so important when we're dealing with hyperglycemia all the time and we're dealing with hyperinsulinemia, just chronically high levels of insulin. Like this could be something that lets people have their cake and eat it too, almost literally. The cool thing is, additionally, they had subjects consume that five gram allulose tea, sweetened tea, 
three times per day for 12 weeks, and there were no adverse effects, not even digestive issues. It all came just easily with no issues. Now, when it comes down to baking, the stuff tastes like sugar. It pretty much has the same taste as sugar. When it comes to like baking a cake or brownies or sweetening a beverage, it's as close as you're probably going to get when it comes down to mimicking that taste of sugar, simply because it is essentially a rare sugar. And now there is a really cool new version of this stuff coming out. You've heard of Lakanto before because Lakanto really took the world by storm with erythritol in the first place because they had a unique technology where they spray coated monk fruit, which is very sweet, over an erythritol grain. Well, now they've taken that same technology and they've done it with allulose. It is absolutely a game changer. And I mean that, I know they say that phrase a lot, but what they're doing by spray coating monk fruit over allulose is they're able to sweeten it even more so you don't even need as much. So then you can bake with it and the crystallization of it is amazing. So you can get it to crystallize, you can get it to caramelize, you can get it to act just like real sugar, but also it has the moisture retention that you need to accurately bake. That's what happens a lot of times when people are baking with sugar substitutes. Like you don't get the proper moisture retention that you would get with sugar because certain carbohydrates are gonna hold a certain volume of water and that gets you to have that like fluffiness and that texture that sometimes you don't get otherwise or you have to add extra oil. In this case, Lakanto really has this part nailed. Now, what'll happen is a lot of times if you have blends, like erythritol and monk fruit, erythritol and sucralose, or even allulose, and when people mix things, they'll do one grain and then another, you're mixing grains, right? So you're having some grains of allulose, some grains of erythritol, whatever, in a blend. That means when you try to bake with it, you're having an uneven taste, an uneven sweetness. But by spray coating monk fruit over the allulose, you're getting the sweetness of the monk fruit evenly coated over a grain of allulose, which is truly pretty revolutionary. And that's one thing that Lakanto does that they've done very, very right, which is why when it comes down to the baking category and the cooking category, they really do take the cake, so to speak. Now they're doing a formal launch of this product and they're doing all this stuff to make a lot of noise about it. And I'm very proud to be a part of it because it's something I truly do stand behind. And this isn't something that just came out of nowhere. You've seen me talking about allulose on this channel for years if you follow this channel. I have touted the benefits in all kinds of different areas, so I put a link down below for you to try it out and be some of the first to ever get your hands on it because this is something that they are launching and I am pleased to be able to be one of the first people to announce it out to the world as well. So check that link out down below and use it for baking, use it for sweetening tea, use it in your coffee, eat it straight up, eat it with a sandwich like that one study check it out. So it is in the top line of the description underneath this video. But wait, I have to tell you a little bit more about other things that they can do. When you hear what this stuff can do to the microbiome, it's really fascinating. What's interesting is that because it doesn't ferment, researchers don't really know why it's having a positive impact on the microbiome, but there's speculation. There's a study published in Nutrients that demonstrated that when allulose was consumed, it increased short chain fatty acid production. Short chain fatty acids are like signaling molecules. They are the byproduct of bacteria feeding on fibers. So what we're kind of seeing here, there's also been an increase in microbial diversity when people use allulose, or in this case, when rodents are using allulose as well. Now, what's interesting with this is it could be because it's inhibiting some of the enzymes that break down sugar, maybe it's allowing some of the sugars to remain in the gut or carbohydrates to not get absorbed and stay in the gut, theoretically, and feed the good bacteria there, allowing them to produce more short chain fatty acids. I could go on and on and on about microbiome benefits, but to get the microbiome benefits without bloating and fermenting is almost unheard of, because usually you're dealing with prebiotic fibers, which are great, but you're gonna have bloating that comes with that. But then there's the category of glucagon-like peptide one. This is relatively new stuff. I did a video on this about two or three months ago, you may remember. There is a study published in Biochemical and Biophysical Research Communications that found that in rodents, allulose was a potent stimulator of GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide. Like maybe you've heard of these peptides before, right? You've heard people talk about semaglutide and all this stuff. Not saying that allulose is like that, but saying that allulose seems to impact the secretion of GLP-1 even for up to two hours after ingestion. What does this mean? Well, GLP-1 regulates glucose and regulates insulin levels. 
So this could be yet another way in which allulose is helping modulate glucose. In addition to that, it can help make you less hungry. GLP-1s will make you less hungry. When you stimulate GLP-1 production, you have less hunger. That is really fascinating. Now, this still needs to be flushed out in humans. This part was rodent model research, but that's how the things start. They start in in vitro, then they go to rodent, then they go to humans. We have plenty of human evidence with allulose. It's just in the rodent model stages for this extra stuff like GLP-1 secretion. Now the fun stuff. There's a study published in the Journal of Food Processing and Preservation. This is the one where they used varying amounts of allulose in different baking situations. When they put allulose as 25% of the sweetener in a baking situation, people that were tasting it from a sensorial perspective could not even tell the difference. There wasn't even a noticeable difference. Like 25% of the sugar removed and allulose replaced, and even to the people that really are good at taste testing, they could not tell the difference. Now, as you start to increase, I'm sure you could notice a difference if your palate is very sensitive, but even still, allulose has made a name for itself by not having sort of that same sensation that erythritol has. I don't have any problems with erythritol. I think it's fabulous, to be honest. But the problem that people do have with erythritol is you have that cool kind of almost minty-like sensation that you get, both in your stomach and in your mouth. It's got a cooling feeling, and it's very telling. You can tell when something has erythritol, especially a beverage. And people can be kind of gut sensitive to erythritol sometimes, even though erythritol is generally urinated out as well. So allulose takes the pressure off the gut and it makes the flavor very neutral. And it doesn't make it syrupy. Now it's a little less sweet than sugar as well. So sometimes you have to add a tiny bit more. But the best kind of situation that you could do is say Thanksgiving dinner. You want grandma to have a little less sugar because you're worried about her. But you don't want to just totally give her something completely sugar free. So you bake a cake with half sugar, half allulose. That way she gets the taste that she wants but she's also getting the glucose modulation effect by the allulose impacting the absorption of the glucose. This truly is a game changer. And I know that sometimes stuff like this can get suppressed because it's just different and a different way of thinking, but I highly recommend you try it. Try it in your coffee, try it in your tea, try it straight up, try it with a sandwich, try baking with it, make cookies with it, whatever. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and big thank you to LeCanto for making this happen to the world. See you tomorrow.